Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created three types of creation. He created the angels, he created the human beings and the jinn, and then he created the animals. As for the angels, then they are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that always obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have no desires. And then the human being is a creation that has desires and that has intellect. And then you have the animals that have little intellect but are overwhelmed by desire. So Ibn al-Qayyim goes on to say that when a human being uses the intellect to overpower his desires, he becomes like an angel, totally obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when an individual lets his desires and his whims overpower his intellect, he becomes like an animal, something very lowly and debased. Our predecessors used to say that it is from the greatest blessings of Allah that our sins do not give off an odor. Because if they gave off an odor, then no one would want to sit around us. But Allah, He covered our sins. He covered our sins and this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What gives you the right to condemn and put down anyone else when you are just as sinful as the person sitting next to you or the person you are talking to? Because Allah, when He addresses His slaves, He says, Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allaha yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. So you do not have the right to judge and say that such and such person will not go to Jannah. You do not have the right to say that such and such person cannot change. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened his doors for anyone and you are no one to close them. One day the Prophet sallallahu was with his companions close to a marketplace or close to an area that was really, really busy. And there was this one woman running previously from one end to the other. And as she would run, she would pick up a child, look at it and then put it down and then run to the other side and look for another child to pick up. So this woman, she continued to do so and it became apparent that she had lost her child and she was extremely worried like any one of us would have been. So when she finally finds her child, she holds on to it. A grip that you could see that you would never want to let go of. And then Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, Do you see this woman? Do you think she would ever throw her child into the fire? And the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they said, By Allah, she would never do so. She would never do it. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to say, Allahu arhamu bi'ibadihi min hadihi bi waladiha. That Allah is more compassionate and more merciful with his slaves than this woman is with her child. The Prophet ﷺ said that the leader in all forms of seeking forgiveness is this very say. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant. Khalaqatani wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mustata'at. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no one worthy of worship besides you and I am your slave and am upon your covenant. I recognize the blessings that you have bestowed upon me and likewise, I recognize the sins that I have committed. And I know that there is no one who can commit sin Accept that you will forgive him and you are the only one that forgives. So forgive me, Ya Allah. Everyone in this room wants Jannah and this is one simple act that we can do just by memorizing these words and saying them twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. That if we were to do this, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that we would be guaranteed paradise. How many of us actually contemplate this fact throughout the day and throughout the night? That our lives in this world are not just the minutes that we are enjoying in this conference, but our lives in this world are just a passage towards a life of the hereafter. While our lives in this world are temporary, some of us may live to 60, 70, 80, maybe even 100 years old. But the life of the hereafter is a life of eternity. A life of blessings or punishment. And you are the one that is choosing that destination. And by seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, you are choosing the path 
to stay away from those things that he dislikes and has forbidden and are choosing the path towards his obedience and his pleasure which is none other than that of paradise. We each have individual things that we can't have in this dunya or aren't able to have in this dunya that we would want in paradise. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talks about paradise, he only talks about a few blessings in paradise. Only a few of them. He'll give you a glimpse of what the houses are like. He'll give you a glimpse of the smells or the drinks that are in Jannah. But the vast majority of things are hidden and they aren't explained or aren't detailed. Whereas when it comes to the hellfire, each action pretty much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has detailed its punishment. That if you were to do such and such, then the punishment in the hellfire is such and such. The wisdom behind this is that when it comes to our desires and our longings and our wants, our imaginations are the limit. But when it comes to punishments, our mind naturally does not want to perceive punishment and thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detailed to them. But as for the pleasures and as the rewards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply had to say one statement about it. And then our minds do the rest. That they will have anything and everything that they desire of Jannah and we will still have more to give them. So anything that you could possibly want in paradise, Allah is willing to give you and will give you and then will even give you more on top of that. All you have to do is get there. Brothers and sisters, we are all in need of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they said that a hypocrite, he views his sins as if it is a mosquito that lands on his nose and he just sways it away. Whereas the believer, he feels his sins as if they're a mountain upon his shoulders. As if they're a mountain upon his shoulders.